Hello, my name is Bill Scholler, and I want to thank the Animation Celebration Fest for uh, including the uh, Call from a Distant Shore in their festival. Now, um, this work was a partnership between myself and David Jenkins. David Jenkins was the writer, and I did the uh, music and the animation. Um, now we, we mulled this idea over, we created it while we were living, both living in Japan. I'm now in Oregon and uh, David's in New Zealand. But at that time when we were creating this, um, we were both teaching uh, at a university in Yokosuka, Japan. So the idea was to um, give our impressions of how we saw events occurring in the United States. Now it's not a documentary, um, it was just how we saw things from our point of view and we use that as a basis of our expression through, you know, it's a work of art. Uh, at any rate, so David has an MFA from the University of Arizona. He's uh, had several of his plays staged in California and Arizona at art houses and universities. His recent jazz poems were published in Jerry Jazz Musician, and his nature poetry will appear in the next issue of the Tiger Moth Review. And uh, my background is uh, I have an MFA in painting from UC Berkeley, and uh, I'm a member of the Sacramento Blues Society. So I have two things going on uh, life as a musician and life as a artist and painter and teacher and I was a printmaker and that sort of thing. Um, I also ran an arts program in a prison and I did that for a number of years uh, Solano State Prison in California and I ran an arts program that uh, would uh, give the inmates uh, opportunity to participate in classes in music, painting, poetry screenwriting, <laughs> play, uh, acting, sorry, acting. Um, and I would use uh, inmates, prisoners, who had a facility to teach. Uh, I would use them to teach these little workshops, and I would teach the major classes in that program. So at any rate, so that's my background. Um, I also am a musician, so I have a song I wrote called A World Full of Blues, that was recorded by uh, two Nashville uh, greats, a team of uh, Rob Ikes and, and Trey Hensley. They're kind of uh, bluegrass avant-garde, well, not avant-garde, but cutting edge. And I was really happy that uh, in the recording that they did of this song, that one of my childhood idols, Taj Mahal, also sang uh, some sections. So um, that was uh, with a song that I wrote called A World Full of Blues. So the name of our film, again, is Call from a Distant Shore. And it begins with a telephone ringing and my wife asking some questions here and there throughout the film. But the, um, let me give you a description of the film. Call from a Distant Shore, it's a series of 13 related animations set to music and narrated by poetry. And it's a tapestry of words, music, and imagery telling a story of what it's like to watch one's country descend into chaos from afar. So that's how we felt about it, that there were problems, and we wanted to express that. As I said, the process was that the uh, David would send me some poems, and um, we would meet, sometimes I would go out to where he was with my tape recorder and re record his narrations. Sometimes he would come to my house in Yokosuka and we collected his audio material there and I used um, a, a garage band that I used for that. No, let me see. No, I used Logic Pro uh, to record uh, David's narrations. That I also use that for my music and I've collected a number of different instruments over the years from different countries. So you'll hear um, actually that instrument back no, huh, over there. It's called a Capache mandolin. I got that in Bali. Uh, 
I use that on one of the tunes. Um, different uh, uh, Kyoto, no Koto, sorry, not the kind, not the city, but uh, Koto, uh, shamisen, sanshin, um, an accordion. I'm mainly a guitarist, so the guitar, you hear a lot of guitar work throughout the soundtrack. So lyrics, our poems, music, and then the animation would come into play. And for the animation, I used um, Premiere Pro to create the animation, but the, but the images were created in uh, Photoshop. So here's some of the images here. And, uh, for instance, these are all watercolors. So, in the film, I combined this image and then cut and pasted and overlaid this image and then kind of did some manipulations. The manipulations I did were simply to uh, take a painting, photograph it, repaint it, photograph it, repaint it, photograph it, repaint it, photograph it. So, and so that was something that I started with uh, my wife's a teacher. She's retired now. But in, in Yokosuka, um, she was teaching animation to the kids at the uh, middle school. And so um, I was able to learn from her how to do this sort of thing and um, using Premiere Pro. And uh, we taught a class together in animation. And I had this idea of... Well, what I would call kind of growing, growing images. So images, here's that train wheel, <laughs> there were two of them. This one here, that one there, that combined, you know, with this, this track here. <laughs> anyway, um, so I had the idea of, uh, doing a drawing, photographing it, extending some lines, photographing it. So it's kind of a growing process. The image, images grow. So I didn't really have too much of you know, animation with a figure walking across the screen, screen, but mainly a picture that changes and changes and changes with the addition of, of images. So uh, let me see if I can find an example of that. So these are watercolors that were put into Photoshop and then altered within Photoshop. So for instance, this one here, I started off with just one figure in the center, one talking head, and then I would, uh, on a separate sheet, I drew all these mouths. I looked at myself and copied my mouth with a little pencil drawing, and then I copied that throughout all these and dropped them in, pasted them in to all these figures and try to do my best to uh, get them to articulate, you know, these words that were, were being said, or just some of the words. And um, usually, you know, the process kind of grows um, for me. Uh, I just go with it. You know, I get an idea for an image. I start painting it, and let's just see where it goes, and just start working. Now on one of the films, so this is the kind of paper I use, you know, this, you're familiar with this, Arches watercolor paper. There we go. Nice and frame. So this is the paper. And these were figures that uh, were in the last, one of the last animations. My wife and I, we went to a protest uh, march in Tokyo. And so these are actually paintings of friends that I would then, you know, only take the top one and you would move from one to the other. Now the process that was used, this is also a scene from that uh, rally. That's my impression. It was very cold that night in Tokyo. And here we are marching along. There we go. Um, so the process, actually, once you get your images, here's a Buddha that shows up in a couple. And uh, actually, this one was painted with coffee, a uh, cup of coffee using French rose. And I would sit and, you know, treat the, use it as like watercolor. This is a motif that shows up a lot. I don't know what it means, 
but it shows up a lot in the film. So a little bit of mystery that was engineered into the whole thing. So at any rate, um, so you take one image, and then I take then I add another. So these images were created in Photoshop, and usually it's taking a starting with one image and then altering it, and then fading from one to the other in a slow fade. It gives the illusion that the image is changing, but it's really just a slow crossfade. Sometimes I would speed the crossfades up. Um, in some cases, I would distort the image like this one. You see at the end, it kind of, I want to give the impression of water, you know, where um, actually this character shows up, this fish. I guess there, there's the fish. And I, even though I painted it this way, it kind of shows up like that, you know. So when you're doing illustration, all this outside edge doesn't matter that much because you're going to crop it and change it. But here's an example of something, the end result, you know, there's a lot of little manipulations going on with that, with that drawing. A lot of lines, I should say. So, uh, some, so the, the main operation was to um, do everything with painting and then overlay. Then sometimes I would do some adjustments and alterations in Photoshop. And then I would, uh, usually the technique in, in, in Premiere Pro, which is the editing tool for making the film, I just do a slow crossfade. My background, again, is in painting and music. So video, I just did a few videos in Japan based on my music and had some sense of it. I really wanted to do a project that would keep me at home because, as I mentioned, in Japan I was a musician, so there was a lot of train rides. This is an interesting fellow. There he goes outside there. Anyway, so I felt by working at home um, on this, I could take care of my, you know, two talents, main talents, which is music and, 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 and visual art. Um, so for photographing the images, you know, the paintings, so here's another painting here, for instance. Um, I um, simply use my iPhone, and it's 252. At <laughs> so. um, any rate, um, although some of the, when I first started off, I used a copy stand and a Nikon camera, digital camera. Now the copy stand has these two lights that you put your photo down, you have a stand where your camera can be mounted, and then the lights are coming at an angle where you don't get reflection. I use for these paintings, I'm using gouache, watercolor. Um, and uh, yeah, this one here is gouache. I like that painting medium because it's very flat. It's very dry. So in the when you photograph it, you're not going to get some reflection back if you had put, let's say, a varnish over the top. It's very dry. What you see is what you get in the image, pretty much. Uh, there was one case where I'd used some varnish because I wanted that effect, some reflection back. I thought that was interesting. So I would photograph these the images, I'd put them down and use a, uh, these two lights that were color balanced and the camera was straight above. But um, I was getting some inconsistencies, what, what you would call registration, getting one image on one image on top of the other. It was they were not quite locking in. Um, but I thought that gave the, the video some character. I found that um, when I would photograph these images, which have these borders, right? So I would put them down on the copy stand and then try to hold my camera above it and, and get it squared away to where it was um, the border around the image within the viewer, you know, was pretty even. So, yeah. 
So, I, yeah. so painting, you know, as far as doing these paintings, you know, I've been teaching drawing for a long time. So I was um, kind of uh, used to the idea of, of, of when you, what's called objective painting or drawing, meaning that you try to duplicate the image in front of you. This is from a photograph that I got online. And then I, you know, created a painting. And it's basically just you paint, you look back, if something doesn't look right in your painting, when you look at the other image, you correct it. Um, and if you have to take out an area that you really like, uh, so what? You just move quickly, it's not right, and you change it, and then you redo it. Um, so the images, most of them were with my iPhone. Most of this was done when I moved to Oregon. My wife was still in Japan, so I was in this house. It's kind of more empty than it is now. It's quite nice. And I could wake up every day and get to work. And that's what my life was, was working on this project. It was a two-year project. Um, so most challenging parts of this, oh, then when I got the image into the phone, I would mail it to myself and then get it into my computer, the one that I'm talking to you with right now. And... Uh, download it into the program and make the alterations, change it into a JPEG, uh, put layers, you know, compress the layers and all that sort of stuff. And then, then it would be ready. Once it was a JPEG, it would be ready then to assemble in, again, Premiere Pro to create a film um, to be sequenced and faded in and out and all that sort of stuff. And the soundtrack would then be brought in from um, the Logic program. And then, then, you know, it'd all be combined. Sometimes I would try to uh, coordinate image shifts with something that happened in the music something or something that happened with David's reading. Um, a couple cases, I actually did the readings, things that have more of a jazz tempo. Since I have a musician's background, a musical background, I had a better feel for that rhythmic type of reading. Um, so David asked me to do that. Because I would sometimes I would send him demos, you know, say, "Hey, Dave, here's how the here's how I see the reading going in." So I'd give him my reading with the images, kind of a you know as a scratch. It's called you know, it's, it's just give him an idea where the words are going to be and where you know we'll need some pauses and that sort of thing to coordinate it with the with the film. So um, most challenging part, I was just uh, well, the whole thing was overwhelming. Um, my attitude was just to move forward. Um, the techniques as I've described them, they're pretty simple. I like that. It made the it made the, the video a kind of democratic. You know, anyone can make one of these. Um, you know, using your smartphone, using these programs that are very common to the Apple uh, world. And uh, so um, certain images, like painting the moon, you know, that's not really my forte is that sort of painting, but I just applied myself and I moved forward and did it. Um, one of the biggest problems was to keep on track with all, where all these images had gone. Also to keep track of when the final edit was because I would redo it and redo it and redo it. And I, I wanted to make sure that when I started the next day, I was working with the current music or the current images or where the current film was. Um, sometimes I would look at the video and all of a sudden an image would just disappear. <laughs> and I have to trace back. How come that image didn't show up there? So there were a lot of computer problems that I had to work through. My wife helped me out a lot on that. Um, but... Um, the roadmap was set by David's work, by his writing. So that, that made it e kind of a little bit easier for me. Uh, I really admire his work and I really, I, I, I like the way he does his readings, you know. It, it, so I wanted to make sure I didn't get in the way of, 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 uh, of the language, of the words, of his reading that was uh, carrying the load of the, the expression. The paintings were augmenting that. I didn't want the paintings to illustrate what he was saying. Sometimes they do. I really didn't want that. 
I wanted to um, use the paintings to extend the feelings and ideas that, that David's poetry presented. So uh, sometimes, you know, the images that I was creating were not in his work. Um, and then there were cases where they were, but uh, I was really worried about illustrating. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to create an expression in my paintings and in my music that it was unique to itself. That mixed well in, when combined with David's writing, and, and, it, and then it gave the, the impression that I thought was, uh, well, a lot of these impressions you just discover. <laughs> you just you, you put things together, and, and, and you really, when, when, when some sort of feeling or, or, or emotion is created in, along the way as you're working, they're like gifts, uh, you know, um, and you keep your eyes open, your ears open to recognize when something interesting has happened. So, um, so it sounds like, so I was trying not to control it too much, but just keep my eyes and ears open. Like sometimes the registration was off. You know, the image was here and then all of a sudden it would kind of jerk as you went to the next frame. And at first that bothered me, but then aesthetically it seemed okay. So I, I tried to keep those type of happy accidents, those fortunate mistakes that come along when you're creating something. Um, so advice that I would give uh, for a, a young someone to, to take this sort of thing on is um, stay focused on what your desire is to do and uh, support yourself um, and be patient with yourself. Be nice to yourself. Um, this process has an element of resistance to it. In other words, it doesn't happen quickly. It's, it's a slow process. And so you have to have faith in what you're doing. Um, but just to... Uh, Stay engaged and enjoy the process, even though it, you know, this took two years to do. But it gave me something, you know, when I woke up in the morning uh, that I would get to work on. And yeah, it, it, there's again these surprises that happen along the way. And uh, you have this general idea, and, you, and you're sharing it with, in my case, with a partner. So I would run these things by David through the internet and, hey, am I on the right track with this? Or this is my take on this poem. Uh, does that resonate with you? And in some cases, he said, well, gee, that, I, I felt it would have this sort of feeling. Uh, he's a very good person to work with. So, oh, okay, so I would scrap and redo. But that didn't happen that much. You know, we were both kind of venturing out in an area we've never really worked before. So, um... So as far as getting started animating, get started animating. You know, just don't worry that you're you don't quite understand the techniques. You'll just you'll you know as you work and you a problem comes up, you'll find the way to get the result. To get a result, it may not be the result you wanted, but it's a result that will lead towards a completed completed work. Something you can look back on. And uh, again, it, it's a lot of it's a lot of work. It takes some time. It requires patience, as I said, uh, patience with yourself. But it's uh, kind of nice, neat, to uh, look back on it. And sometimes you wonder, like, how did I how did I even do that? Um, so, yes, start. It's an adventure, and an adventure means you don't know how it's going to turn out or how it's going to go, go about. How are you going to get these things done? But that's part of the things you should really relish when you're doing it. And uh, and this, and all of a sudden, one day it's done and you can look back on it and, uh, and then you move on to the next thing. But um, yeah, I would encourage you all to do it. Be kind to yourself. I, I congratulate you if, you if you're going to do this sort of thing. And uh, it is a nice, you know, contribution to the world. You're offering your point of view. You're sharing your talents. You're uh, discovering your point of view. You're discovering your talents. 
by doing this type of work. Well, um, thank you so much again for, for uh, taking a moment to, to listen to this little uh, presentation. And I hope you're enjoying the festival. Bye-bye. Okay,